Of all the items in the Lands of Shadow that are tucked away in secret locations, none are more gruesome than the Lamenter's Mask, which is a reusable item that transforms your character into a Lamenter. Not only does it transform your appearance, it also boosts all your defense and damage negation stats by 18%. The only catch is, the only way to remove the effect is with your death. So let's get ready to dive into some dungeons and get after it. To reach the area where the mask is located, you'll need to uncover Charo's Hidden Grave, which is a secret subregion above the Cerulean Coast that can only be accessed by taking a careful route through the gravesite plane. The first step is to head to the Dragon's Pit, which can be reached by heading south after crossing the Elec Great Bridge, making a right at the fork in the road, and continuing south where you'll run into the entrance of the Dragon's Pit. From here, you'll just need to make your way through the small dungeon and defeat the boss who's blocking the path to the Jagged Peak. In order to get to him though, you'll need to take a leap of faith in front of a large ceremonial basin which is at the lowest point of the cave. After dropping down right in front of the boss's fog gate, you can buff up, head in, and go full send with whatever you have on deck. Once you defeat the boss, he'll drop the Dragon Hunter's Great Katana and clear the way to the Dragon Pit Terminus side of Grace. This particular boss isn't overly tough, just make sure that you steer clear when he uses the Dragon Wound Slash skill since it packs a pretty big punch at close range. From the Dragon Pit Terminus side of Grace, you'll head out of the cave and follow the highlighted route, bypassing the sleeping Drake in the pond and heading toward the Grand Altar of Dragon Communion. From the altar, you'll head southwest over the dragon's back foot, where you'll reach a small ledge, and once you hop over it, you'll enter a field full of blood red flowers, which marks the edge of Charo's hidden grave. After dropping down into the field of red flowers, if you follow the highlighted route on the map, you'll find the Charo's hidden grave side of grace to the north, and once you light the side of grace, you'll need to speed torrent past the Deathrite Bird boss fight and continue on to the Lamenter's Jail. The jail isn't overly large, however, once you head inside, you'll need to secure two keys from two separate parts of the jail, which allow you access to both the upper and lower levels of the dungeon. The first one to gain entry can be found by taking your first left into the tunnels and entering the second room on the right which houses two shade enemies and a chest. Once you dispatch the shades, you can open the chest where you can loot the key to the jail's upper level. Once you have the key in hand, you can head back in the direction you came and use the key to unlock the gate right at the beginning of the dungeon, which will open the way to a ladder leading further down into the dungeon where things will get a little more interesting. If you happen to be feeling a little maidenless for this particular area, you can always pick up some more Scotta Tree fragments to increase your power. And if you're not sure where to grab them, I'll leave a link in the description to help get you jump started. Once you hit the bottom of the ladder, you'll need to hit the ground running since there will be some living jar flesh enemies that pop out of jars in the area. You can stop and kill them if you like, just keep in mind that their scream attack disrupts a majority of the range attacks that you send their way. After moving through the second doorway, the floor will collapse and you'll fall into a room full of shades, and you can either kill them or run around them, the choice is really yours. From the shade room, you'll need to exit and head up the stairs and make a right where the shade is hiding to sneak attack you, and then just continue down the hall where you'll need to make a small gap jump before reaching a room filled with living jars. After entering the room, you'll need to drop down and immediately move to your left where you'll have to kill two of the large living jars in the area in order to reach the chest. The large living jars are fairly tough, so make sure your plan to deal with them is solid at the very least. Once the jars are defeated, you can open the chest and grab the key before the mini jars come over and scratch up your armor. That's if you're wearing it. Once the key is in hand, you can run up the rocks to the left of the chest and head back the way you came until you reach the stairs. Keep in mind though, you'll need to make that small gap jump again so that you don't accidentally fall to your death. As you follow the game footage, it is important to note that the jail lower level key not only opens the way to the dungeon's boss fight, but it also opens a secret gate that's hidden behind an illusionary wall right near a small room where you'll loot the Call of Tibia item. Behind the wall you can unlock the gate and pick up the Shadow Realm Rune 4 and a special lantern called the Lamenting Visage which has some unique properties against shades. 
After combat rolling through the fatal funnel and barely avoiding death by living jar flesh, you can head through the next doorway, drop down to kill another fleshy blob that bursts out of a pot to greet you, and once you get him out of the way, you can unlock the nearby gate. Once the gate's open, you can run through the first room and through the next doorway where you'll find a ladder that you can take down to the lowest level of the jail. At the bottom of the ladder, you'll find the boss's fog gate, and from here you can buff up and head in. Just make sure you have a decent spirit ash on deck to run a little bit of interference. The boss itself isn't overly tough, but it can be a little confusing since after you take a giant chunk out of his health bar, he'll just up and disappear for about 5 seconds or so, but when he returns, he'll bring back a whole squad of illusions that are just waiting to jump you. If you do get a little caught up in the fog of battle and maybe a little turned around after he brings in all his copies, the best way to tell which one the real boss is is by his bright red loincloth. After finally getting in a few good hits and bringing down the boss, he'll drop the Lamenter's Mask, which allows you to change your form while you're not wearing any of your armor. Just remember, the only way to remove it is by dying, which really shouldn't be all that hard. So until next time, stay safe out there, Tarnished, and as always... Good hunting.